Your final activity for today is to complete this literature review worksheet. This worksheet guides you through the steps you need to develop your research question and search the databases later on. You don't need to have a firm topic in your head to do this. The idea is this worksheet helps you practice the steps working towards your research proposal to clarify your ideas and that you're in a good position when you finally sit down and search the literature. You'll notice that this is similar to a worksheet that we've completed before and that's because we want to build on what we did in the last module um, and if you've done a research literature review before you know the steps are simple so that is in your favour. Some of the terminology on the sheet you might want to go um, and research to remind yourself what we're talking about and you may need to revisit the workbooks previously in the module um, that you've been instructed to do today to assist you. So the first box number one asks us which topic are we interested in? So you should have some ideas, you've been in clinical practice, I think you know you will know more about what is current in maternity maybe than some of your lecturers. Um, something you might be interested in is uh, breastfeeding in um, teenage mothers. You might also be interested in looking at, for example, um, the care of women uh, with sickle cell. You might want to look at women's experiences. And here you could look at a long list of things. You could look at um, induction of labour. You could look at um, elective caesarean requests. You could look at uh, birth centres or home births. So there's many options. So I would encourage you to write down all of the topics that you're interested in. Work from that mind map I've asked you to do originally um, and really break it down. And part of this is also thinking about why it's important. We want to do a worthwhile research project. We don't want to do things that um, would, you know, would waste time or don't contribute to the um, contribute to midwifery as a whole. So I am going to look at one example and I'm going to refine my topic and I'm going to say that I'm interested in women's um, experiences of water bath, as that's what I'm really interested in. So who is this important? Well, it's obviously very important for women um, and their families. Okay, so we have to always think about our service users. How is this going to impact them? So will it give them information um, about their birth choices and what other women have experienced? It's also going to be important for midwives. This is important for our profession as a whole. Um, but also individually, as midwives can use this to inform their individual practice. But the information that we're going to get from this literature review is going to you know, impact our profession as a whole because it will go into the body of literature. It provides us with more information about midwives and their ways of practicing um, and why it's important you know, for women who are offered a water birth, you know, why that was important for their experience. I can now scroll down to um, question three, and this asks us to convert the topic into a searchable question. And this is where you need to spend the most time because it's not as easy as just putting it into um, Google and coming out with all the papers that you need for your review. You need to have something that's very searchable. And there's an example here, what are women's experiences of an online antenatal classes? It's nice and specific and it uses a question word. And that's those what, why, who, when, and where. So my topic was women's experiences of water birth. So I think to convert this into a searchable question, I would go with what and say, what are women's experiences of water birth? So this is a fairly easy one. There might be some that are a little bit harder. So you might need to refine, you know, start refining your question down, start being more specific. If you can't easily turn it into a searchable question, then you might need to go back to your topic as well and think, is this going to be achievable? 
Now I can then go down and use the following boxes to refine my question. And this is when you're thinking about looking at the workbook, you'll have looked at your population, your exposure, your intervention, comparison, outcome. And you can see here, this is from the PICO or the PO framework. Now PO is mostly used for qualitative research and it's important you identify, is your question qualitative or quantitative? If we look at women's experiences of water birth, this is going to be a qualitative question. So I'm going to use the PO framework. So my population, who am I interested in? I'm interested in women, okay, because I'm interested in women's experiences. But I need to think a bit more closely. Do I want to look at primates? Or multips? Because these are perhaps women who are going to have very different experiences. Do I want to look at high risk or complex? Or, you know, am I looking at women who don't have any existing risk factors would be considered low risk? Do I want to exclude them? I might at this point think, actually, I'm not really interested in what the women are thinking about it. It sounds bad, but I'm actually really interested in what the midwives think. So I might change my population. But it's really important that your population is not women and midwives because they're two really different groups. So I think you should go down the route of either looking at service users' experiences or midwives' experiences, but not combining them. So I then have to think about exposure. So what exposure or intervention am I interested in? So obviously it's water birth, but I might need to refine this. Do I mean labouring in the water? Do I mean um, actually delivering in the water? Or what about women who use um, water in early labour? So I need to think carefully here because I can really only choose one of these. For example, um, I mean, with this question, it's quite straightforward. But if it is something that's, you know, more complex, there may be more one or more exposure. And here I would want to have a consistent definition of what they're exposed to so that my question is clear and my results when I finally get to them um, are also really consistent. If I was going to do a comparison, I would do um, compared to giving birth on dry land. But remember, we don't always need a comparison. And then outcome, what am I interested? So I'm interested in their experiences, their, um, maybe their attitudes, okay, their views on their um, labour and birth experience. Okay. Now finally, coming down, well not finally, we're halfway through, going down to question five, can we identify key concepts from your question? Now your key concepts um, or topics are really important because they are going to be what helps you search the literature and find your, your key words. So key topics, normally there's three or four, and here um, it's very simple because they often come from your PO or your PICO framework. So if I think about my population, well, it's women, that's one of my concepts. Um, their exposure, okay, water birth. That's another concept. And finally, right, their um, experiences. So there we've got our last concept. So go back and look at your question, look back at the PO framework, and your concepts will come from that. And from these concepts, we can get our keywords. So simply plug in your concepts. And this is when you need to think about your synonyms, so other, other words for women. Well, we might want to go woman, we might want to go service user. Concept two, water birth. We may need to be a bit creative here. We may need to go, so um, labour in water. We might want to say pool birth. Okay, and you'll have to be creative, get out a dictionary, look at the thesaurus, see how many um, words you can get. And experiences, there would be lots for this one. Attitudes, views. You may want to go down the beliefs route.
Now, question seven. This is where you might want to watch the video on inclusion and exclusion criteria. Now, here there are various um, things you can include. And the whole point of a literature review is that you find literature that's similar. So you want to make it similar by including inclusion criteria that allows you to filter the papers. So your inclusion criteria are criteria you want the studies to have. So, for example, you want the participant to be pregnant. I would want the participant to be labouring in water. Um, I might want her to be term. I want, might want her to be, um, you know, all variety of characteristics. In comparison, the exclusion criteria are criteria that studies should not have. If they've got them, then you cannot include them in your review. Examples, you know, often focus around um, that it must be we can't have studies that aren't published in English, or you might want to look at a time frame. Ideally, we would go back five years to look for recent literature, but it may be that we need to go back further. So for sure, we'll think about um, location. So where is this study being published? Have they got a comparable healthcare system to the UK? Is it going to be published in English? And when is it going to be published? And finally, tell me which databases you're going to search. You might have to look at the library page to refresh yourself um, and I'd expect to see more than just Google Scholar here. So that's how to complete the worksheet. The idea is that it helps you structure your question um, and will prepare us for coming back to the session next week.